Good morning, class. Welcome to our science ODL class with Teacher Zeno. Today, we are going to discuss about the quarter two, comparing comets, meteors, and asteroids. We are now on the week six. Our objectives are the following. You must be able to compare and contrast comets, meteors, and asteroids. First, describe the characteristics of comets. Second, describe the characteristics of asteroids. And third, describe the characteristics of meteors. Now, let us elicit, can you identify these celestial objects? What do you think is the first picture? How about the second picture and the third picture? Do you believe, class, that dinosaurs became extinct because of an asteroid that hit our planet 60 million years ago? This time, we are going to explore more the NEO, or the near-Earth objects. Let's start with the comets. The word comet comes from the Greek word for hair. Our ancestors thought comets were stars with what looked like flowing hair trailing behind, just like what is on the picture. Comets is also known as dirty snowballs. They are loose collections of, of ice, dust, and small rocky particles whose orbits are usually long and narrow ellipses. The picture shows the comet anatomy. We have the coma, nucleus, the plasma or ion tail, and the dust tail. Let us study the structure of a comet. A comet's head, we have the outer layer, which is known as the coma. It is composed of water vapor, carbon dioxide, and other gases. The solid inner core is known as the nucleus. It is made up of frozen ice, gas, and dust. We have also the comet's tail. As a comet approaches the sun and heats up, some of its gas and dust stream outward, forming a tail. Most comets have two tails. One is the gas or ion tail, and the other one is the dust tail. Look at the picture, class. The tails get longer the closer a comet gets to the sun. The tails are always directed away from the sun. The gas or ion tail points straight away from the sun and the dust tail curves toward the orbital path. So tails point away from the sun because of the force of the solar wind. A comet's tail can be more than 100 million kilometers long. So this one shows the picture of a comet's tail. Looking at the comet's tail, you see the ion tail. How do you describe it? Once it orbits around the sun, it remains straight, while the dust tail is the one that bends. This shows the comet's orbit. This comet moves in an elliptical-shaped orbit. The picture shows the comet Holmes. We have also the Halley's Comet. That is the most famous comet of the 20th century. It is all only known as a short period comet. It takes 75 to 79 years for Comet Halley to orbit the sun. The long period comets take 200. 200 millions of years to complete their orbit around the sun. Let us study the origin of comets. Most comets are found in two regions of the solar system. We have the Kuiper belt and the Oort cloud. Kuiper belt is a donut-shaped region that extends beyond Pluto's orbit to about 100 times Earth's distance from the sun. While Oort cloud is a spherical region of comets that surrounds the solar system out 
to more than 1,000 times the distance between Pluto and the Sun. We have also the another near-Earth object. We call this the asteroids. An asteroid is a small and rocky space object. Most asteroids are found in the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt is located between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So this one shows the asteroid distribution. We have here the asteroid belt. It is between the Mars and the Jupiter. How many asteroids are there? There are about 40,000 known asteroids that are over 0 0.5 miles or 1 kilometer in diameter in the asteroid belt. About 3,000 asteroids have been cataloged. There are many smaller asteroids, which is about 100,000. Asteroids are made of metals, silicate, iron, nickel, and carbon. The first one discovered and the biggest is named Ceres. It was discovered in 18,001. Asteroids range in size from tiny pebbles to about 578 miles or 930 kilometers in diameter, such as the Ceres. Asteroids becoming moons. Asteroids can be pulled out of their solar orbit by the gravitational pull of a planet. They would then orbit that planet instead of orbiting the sun. Astronomers theorize that the two moons of Mars, which are the Phobos and Deimos, are captured asteroids. Asteroid strike. Scientists hypothesize that one or more large asteroids hit Earth 65 million years ago and caused extinction of the dinosaurs. Scientists also hypothesize that the largest mass extinction 250 million years ago, killing off 90% of all species, was also caused by a large asteroid. Let's have the meteoroids. Meteoroids. Meteoroid is a chunk of rock or dust in space. Meteoroids come from comets or asteroids. How about the meteor? When a meteoroid enters Earth's atmosphere, friction with the air creates heat and produces a streak of light that you can see in the sky. A meteor is a meteoroid that enters Earth's atmosphere and burns up. Meteorites, we have meteoroids that pass through the atmosphere and heat Earth's surface are called meteorites. They are classified by composition such as stony iron or stony iron. So the picture below on the left side shows an impact crater. You see also on the right side the different parts of a simple impact crater. We have the impact ejecta, the impact melt and brescia, and the fractured bedrock. A meteoroid usually all burns up when it enters Earth's atmosphere. A meteor is a light phenomenon or a streak of light that occurs when a meteoroid burns up as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. When a fragment from the meteoroid survives and makes it to the ground, the space rock fragment is now called a meteorite. So what are the different types of meteorites? First, we have the stony meteorite. Stony meteorites, the most common type of, type of meteorite, are generally composed of approximately 75 to 90% silicon-based minerals, 10 to 25% nickel iron alloy, and trace amounts of iron sulfide. Another is the stony iron meteorite. Stony iron meteorites contain approximately even amounts of silicates and nickel iron alloy. Iron meteorite. Most iron meteorites likely originated in the course of large asteroids and are composed almost entirely of nickel iron alloy, which is also a primary component of the Earth's core. Let us have meteor showers. Have you ever experienced seeing a meteor shower? 
A meteor shower is a light phenomenon caused by fragments left by a comet as they orbit the sun. While the Earth orbits the sun and passes through the comet fragments, a streak of light is produced. So let us now summarize the different characteristics of the comet, asteroid, and meteor. Let us start with the origin. Comet comes from the Kuiper belt and Oort cloud, while asteroid mostly come from main asteroid belt. So meteor also have similarity when it comes to the origin to the asteroid because it also originated from an asteroid be belt. Second, we have also the shape. Comet and asteroids both have irregular shapes, while mature have no particular shape. For the size, comet has varied sizes, while asteroid can range anywhere from 10 meters in diameter to less than 1,000 kilometers, while mature is about the size of grain and sand. Chemical composition. For the comet, it is made mostly of ices mixed with smaller amounts of dust and rocks, while asteroid is made up of silicates. Silicates are minerals that contain the elements silicon, oxygen, and at least one metal, while mature is an extraterrestrial nickel and iron. For the orbit, comet move in elliptical orbits around the sun. Asteroid orbit is more rounded and less elliptical, while mature is in variety orbit. For the orbital period, or years, comet takes 75 to 100,000 years. For an asteroid, it takes 1 to 100 years to compl complete their orbit around the sun, while for mature, the orbital period is not yet determined. So this one shows a Venn diagram showing the differences and similarities of the comets. How do comets, asteroids, and meteors differ? Do they also have similarities? Use this Venn diagram to analyze and compare these three near-Earth objects. Now, to easily remember concepts about meteors, you should know that it can be from a comet, an asteroid, just like what is on figure one, or debris from planet Mars. Another way to remember the differences of a meteoroid, meteor, and meteorite is their location. You can see on the picture here on the left side, that a meteoroid is in space. We have here the meteoroid. It's located on the space. If it enters the Earth's atmosphere, that is when it becomes a meteor. So the meteor is already on the Earth's atmosphere. Also, remember that not all meteors will reach the Earth's surface. But when it does, the meteor will now become a meteorite. So the meteorite is the one that already enters the Earth's surface. The characteristic of a meteor came from its main material. As I stated above, you already know that it is from an asteroid or maybe from Mars, which is evident from its rocky material. You also learned from the previous module that comets also have small rocky composition. So a meteor can also originate from a comet. You also observe from the picture that it is burning up. You are right that it lights up because there is friction between the material and the gases present in the atmosphere, specifically in the mesosphere. This burning up is also related to meteorites. Since meteoroids are small pieces from an asteroid, due to the friction, the size of the meteor decreases and becomes smaller before it reaches the surface. That is why it is called a fireball. So why are comets, asteroids, and meteors important? They are important for scientists in studying the occurrence of different elements and compounds on Earth. They have modified significantly the Earth's biosphere in the past. Information also and our details about the meteors 
or specifically the meteorites, give information which is important in studying mineral resources, which is an important industry in any country. Now, for your asynchronous time, kindly answer extend on page 19 on your digital module week 6. Answer the summative test on Typhoon. You may also start doing your integrative assessment in Science 8 and English 8 and your reflections for the lessons on typhoons and space science. Kindly uh, submit your outputs in our Google Classroom. And don't forget to click Turned In. So that's for today. Thank you for your active participation. May you enjoy exploring more amazing lessons. Lots of love and God bless. This is Teacher Zendels saying, have a nice day.